They score! They score! Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice and let us be glad. Welcome back to God's Playbook, friends. Today we continue our study of Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. Jesus heals the paralytic. We hear in the gospel, One day while Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles in the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, Stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they were glorifying God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Think of the witness of these friends that were willing to stop at nothing to bring their paralyzed friend to the feet of Jesus. In a setting which is full of people, in a place where they were taking risks to even enter, these men do whatever it takes to bring them by climbing the roof and then lowering their friend to the feet of Jesus. I wonder how many of us would have a set of friends that would do such things for us. Do you have friends that pray for you? People that you can turn to? That can assist you? People that genuinely care of what's going on with yourself as an individual, in your marriage, in your family, at work, at school, wherever we find ourselves. Do we have people in our life that genuinely care about us? My prayer, friends, is that each of us can say yes. In our church family, that's what we do at Mass. I don't just come to Mass to pray for myself. Rather, the prayer of the faithful is meant to be that, the prayer of the faithful, that we're praying for all groups of people, those who come to our mind, those who whom I know personally, but also those who I may not know personally. So that those who may not have friends that they can turn to, can turn to their parish family as support. And as a global church, how important it is for us to climb the roofs of our world and to lower those who are most vulnerable to the feet of Jesus. The poor, the marginalized, the forgotten, the widow, the young person who's struggling in mental health, the uncool kid, the annoying next door neighbor, the person who is sitting in the emergency room. Every single person is a child of God and I have a responsibility to care and love them. For many of us, we have been like the friends. We bring people to God. Please, God, each of us are doing our part to draw those who may have fallen away from faith and come to know God in a more real and practical way. For some of us, we've called priests 
to come and pray over someone, giving them the sacrament of the sick who may be struggling with cancer or another debilitating disease. Please God, there are many of us who have held the hands of friends who are struggling with addiction, drug use, pornography, excessive work, and helping them to come to know that we need God's help to help them to overcome these addictions. How many opportunities of grace do we have to be like the friends in today's gospel? To stop at nothing, to bring the needs of our brothers and sisters to Jesus. Is that not true love? Is that not an example of true friendship, friends? That somebody thinks enough of us to bring our needs to the ears of God? If we love someone, isn't it true that we would stop at nothing to make sure that their needs are cared for? How important it is for us to see every single person as the paralytic, especially when regards to faith. How important it is for us to bring others to come to know Jesus. Those of us listening to this podcast who are madly in love with him, we need to bring others to Jesus. Those who are listening to this podcast who are hungering for God, we need to bring others to come to know Jesus. Those of us who may be questioning our faith and listening to this podcast, we too need to bring others to come to know Jesus. Every single one of us is called to be like the men in this story who bring their friend to Jesus. By bringing the friends to Jesus, Jesus is filled with joy. Jesus sees the faith of the friends and wishes to help the one who needs his grace. How many times have others brought us to God and we as individuals have received the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Think of the impact on our own lives those situations have given to us. Opportunities of renewal, refreshment. They brought us great importance in regards to faith. They help us to move from discouragement to hope. What a beautiful passage for us to reflect upon. Sometimes we might be a little honest with ourselves and saying, I don't necessarily want to go through the work. We can make excuses and not do the work needed to bring others to Jesus. And yet deep down we know we truly should and we want to but we're not necessarily excited at putting in the work. Friends, as we hear this beautiful passage in which St. Luke reminds us that Jesus has first and foremost the ability to forgive sin, it is important that we ourselves recognize our need for God's mercy, but also that experiencing the mercy of God, we remind others too, that no matter what is paralyzing them, past sins, decisions, words, actions, behaviors, nothing can separate us from the love of God. St. Paul says so beautifully. Friends, some of us are listening to this podcast now and we are paralyzed. We're paralyzed in fear. We're paralyzed spiritually. And Jesus wants to free us from our paralysis. He is waiting for us to ask for his assistance. Friends, if you are still holding on to something that you may have said in the past that continues to haunt you, Jesus wants to free you of this. The devil wants us to hold on to those things. The devil wants us to believe that we are unworthy of God's love. Jesus does not want us to listen to the devil's voice. I love you. You are my son. You are my daughter. I wish to free you from this paralysis. Do you want to be free? Friends, 
Sometimes we hold on to things that we've done, serious things that we've done. For some of us, we've been carrying this around for a long time. Jesus wants to free us of these things. He wants to free you of that situation. It doesn't negate the wrong that we've done. It doesn't take back the words that we've said. What was said and done has been done in the past, but it's an opportunity of grace here in the present and in the future. That as Jesus forgives our sins, friends, he gives us an opportunity to be renewed, to be transformed, to be changed, to pick up our bed and to move on with our life. Jesus never wants us to be paralyzed in fear. Jesus doesn't want us to be paralyzed in resentment and regret. Jesus is a God of second chances. And just as he renews this man's life, he wants to renew your life and mine too, friends. And for that we rejoice. Let us give praise to God. So friends, let us acknowledge the times in which God wants us to be more like the friends in the scriptures. But for those of us who are paralyzed right now, let's ask Jesus to free us from what is burdening us. Let us approach the throne of grace as we enter into prayer right now together. Lord our God, we thank you for freeing us of our sins. We thank you for bringing healing to our minds, bodies, and souls. Lord, bless us as we hear this passage. Some of us can identify with the man who is paralyzed. You know our hearts. You know that we are paralyzed at times by fear, resentment, frustration. You are a God who lifts us out of that paralysis. You are the only one who can remove the shackles around our hearts. Free us, O Lord, from our paralysis. Lord, as friends, we also recognize those whom we love who are paralyzed in their sins. Help us to bring them through prayer, through word and action, closer into a more intimate union with you. Sometimes they may not recognize their own paralysis and may come kicking and screaming. Perhaps their rejection of you may continue, that they don't believe they need help. And yet, as our loved ones and friends know, the need is still there. Lord, help us to help them. Lord, we thank you for being patient with us. Lord, we thank you for exhibiting your power over sin Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. As we lift ourselves and those we know and love to your almighty hand, may your hand bring healing as our divine physician. Lord, be with us. Transform us. Heal us. So we may be renewed by your healing touch. We ask these in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us on our Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I, or GoFundMe at God's Playbook Podcast. Thanks and God bless.